time. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just yield myself into your very capable hands, and I pray that wisdom and revelation flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. God, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind, none of me and all of you. And Father, I decrease so that the Word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. Now, Father, I just pray right now that the Word of God will not return to you, null nor void. It will do what it sets out to do. And Father, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move on every household, in every room, on every device. Minister a word that will change their lives. Give them one word that will change their countenance. Give them one word that will deepen their relationship with you. And Father, I just thank you right now that the children are being blessed this morning. The youth will be blessed this week. And Father, I thank you for every, every heart, every ear. And I speak over those hearts and I speak over those ears. And I declare they are good ground to hear and receive your word. Father, we are powerful people. We are believers. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Everything goes well concerning us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We walk in perfect peace. Father, we just thank you in advance for your goodness and your love. And Father, we pray that the word of God in this time with you, that the word of God in this time with you will bring a calmness to our souls, will bring a peace to our souls, and let us know that you are the great I am and everything in today tomorrow and the days to come is going to be all right. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name and Excel Church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and shout about that right there in your living room. Give God some praise. Get your Bible and pen and notebook out or your iPad out. We're going to hop into the Word of God and we're going to dig into this Word today and I feel like it's going to be an encouraging Word uh, for us and for the body of Christ and for uh, 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 visitors joining us online. It's going to be a powerful time in the Word of God. You know, we've been navigating this pandemic, you know, both in the natural and in the supernatural, and we've got the natural down. We know to clean our hands. We know to, we know to do all of those things. We know to, to um, come on out here, Vanna White. I, I, I mean, my God. I wasn't going to do it, but I said, shoot, I'm going to do it. You look so good over there. We know to, um, that was my wife, by the way, that wasn't Vanna White. That was my wife. We know, we know that we, we washed our hands. We know to wear the mask, to wear the gloves, so on and so forth. We've got that down. But the Spirit of the Lord has been dealing with us concerning uh, walking and living in perfect peace. And that's been a powerful teaching for me, uh, a powerful teaching for my home, for my family, for my kids. Because, because without that inner perfect peace, the world will have us uh, like a pinball in a pinball machine all over the place. You know, from this, from this scenario to that scenario, from, from, from this diagnosis to that diagnosis. And, and it's like, okay, it's, it's going to do what it's going to do. It's, it has a novelty to it, this virus does. So it's going to keep changing. But the bottom line is, you know, God is constant. His peace, his inner peace should be constant. And during this time, talking about inner peace, I've been wanting to talk about what we're going to talk about today, uh, which is living, living in godly contentment. Living in godly contentment. You know, you, you know you, when you live in godly contentment, it removes your self-sufficiency. It removes the anxiety to do, and it relaxes you to be. Be what? Be in contentment, godly contentment with God, his promises and his covenant and his peace. Jesus said, listen, my peace, I give it to you. Think about that. And my peace, I leave you. So if Jesus has given us his peace, has left us his peace, we should not be worrying about anything else. We should be living in godly contentment, glory to God. And this morning, we're going to talk about it. You know, within that contentment is everything you need. In that godly contentment is everything you need. It's everything you need. You know, it prevents you from looking way out here, uh, 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 trying to figure out what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, when are, when are things going to turn around. No, I am content in living in godly contentment. I am content in my finances. I am content in my family. I am content in my business. I am content in my job. I am content in the things of God. And being content doesn't mean being complacent. Uh, 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 being content doesn't mean that we're being uh, 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 just, just average, uh, still complacent, not doing things, uh, 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 lazy. No, no, no. It means I am anchored in the promises of God. And that is my steadiness. My godly contentment living in that is my steadiness. How many people know your job can change tomorrow? 
Minister Nikki just told us her job came to her and said, hey, you got a job, but hey, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. Your, your business could change tomorrow. Your, your self-employment could change tomorrow. But if your contentment is based in your job or your business or your career, guess what? You're going to be rattled. You're going to be shaken. But if your contentment is placed in God, you'll just look around and say, God, what's next? God, I'm content. I have my daily bread. I have everything I need to sustain me, and it comes from the Lord above. Amen? So when you think about this word contentment, and you think about all the things that's wrapped in it for our lives as believers, you, 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 you have to think about what I, you know, you got the table of contents in a book. And the table of contents, it, it, it simply tells you what this book contains. What's inside of this book? What to expect? So when I talk about godly and, uh, contentment, you know, you, 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 your table of contents should be filled with faith. You, 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 faith, it should be filled with fortitude. It should be filled with uh, 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 belief. It should be filled with all of those things. Why? Because in this book, in this believer's book, are all the things that God placed in me when I got born again. And during this life, everybody who looks at this book, reads this book, this book encounters life, this book encounters pandemic, within this book, within this table of contents, is faith. And that faith should be rising up through that godly contentment. You know, I was at, um, I was at Minister Mike's house, just kind of, you know, helping him out in the yard and just out there getting dirty, so on and so forth, and, and, and not even thinking about uh, any food, not even thinking about any nourishment, not even thinking about any kind of sustenance to, 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 to hold us until we got finished out there. And he comes to me and he says, hey, my wife says, do you want a, 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 a protein shake, a pro, uh, 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 yeah, protein shake, and, 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 and it's like a little juicy thing. And, and I said, what's in it? He said, well, this, 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 this. And it was all great stuff, fruits, veggies, kale, flaxseed, all kind of stuff. And when she brought it out, it was just a cup. And I feel when I sipped the first sip, the Lord said, everything in this cup. He said, it's not a plate. It's not a fork. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's, it's not a pan. It's not a pot. Everything you need for nutrition is in the contents of this cup. And it does not look like the normal meal. But everything you need to have energy, to, 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 to continue working, everything you need is in the contents of this cup. And I drank that thing, and I said, my God. I said, boy, I got so much energy right now. I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's, let's keep rocking and rolling. Minister Jeff came around the corner. He said, my God, did you have another one in there? And what was happening? Everything we needed for energy to keep going was in the contents of that cup. And I came here to tell you, when you're walking in godly content and when you're living in godly content, when you encounter any kind of thing during this pandemic, they want to lay off furlough. They, when you encounter anything, you need to know all of the contents have been placed on the inside of you for you to get through the storm, on the other side of the storm, and to overcome and to be more than conquerors. Amen? Listen, God is our source. God is our source. The paycheck, the, 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 the business, the stimulus, all these things are just resources, but God is our source. He is the source of supply. He is the vehicle that we go to for sustenance, for supply. God is our source. And it's important to know that if we're going to walk and live in godly contentment. We don't need to deviate from God being our source and think that our, 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 our business acumen is our source or think that our career is bulletproof or, 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 or we don't need to deviate from that thought. God is my source. And settle it now. Settle it now. You say, man, I got money in the bank. You better settle that God is your source. Well, my career is kind of bulletproof. They're, they're going to always need us. You better settle it right now that God is your source and begin to live and walk in perfect peace and live with godly contentment. And when your pivot foot is anchoring in that thought that God is my source, the wind can blow, the rivers can rise, 
Everything can happen around you, chaos, layoffs, furloughs, all that kind of stuff. It can be happening, but you've already settled the fact that God is your source. Let's go to Proverbs 3. Hallelujah. Man, I want you just to repeat that all doggone week. God is my source. Here comes another report. God is my source. Man, we're going on six weeks. God is my source. God is my source. God is my source. We got to trust God in this time. We got to trust God if we're going to perfect living in this godly contentment. Hallelujah. Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and don't lean to your own understanding. This is our offering scripture for this month, but I want to I plug this in in this teaching that we got to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And let me tell you something, that's not easy. I can't believe you said that. That is not easy. This is something that as a believer, you have to practice. You have to continue to put that foot forward, and you have to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. That's why it's so important that you understand the story of Isaac. When the Bible says he sold in the land of famine, what did he do? He had to show himself and tell himself that he's trusting in the Lord with all of his heart. So it's, it's, it's easy for me to say I trust in the Lord with all of my heart when all the money is there. You may be trusting money and don't even realize it. That's one of the things you're going to learn out of this teaching today. You may be trusting self-sufficiency and think you're in faith and you're not in faith. You may be trusting your career and, 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 and think you're in faith, but you're actually trusting your career. Listen, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. This past week, we were sowing spontaneously, giving spontaneously, uh, blessing people spontaneously, all this kind of stuff. Because the Bible says, hey, you, 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 listen, you came in this world naked, you're going to leave naked. The, 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 the last thing you want to be doing now is hoarding and trusting in your deceit for riches. I'm telling those babies, you're not my source. I'm telling that savings account, I don't rely on you. <laughs> I promise you that. I'm telling those investments, you, 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 don't, you don't cause my countenance to rise and fall. So I tell you what, give me 500 of those dollars and let's go over here and bless this. Give me 100 of those dollars, 100 of those dollars, and let's go over here and bless this. I tell you what, this person needs this, let's go ahead and bless them. What am I doing? I'm, 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 I'm training myself to trust in the Lord with all of my heart. He says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And he said, don't lean to your own understanding. Many times our own understanding is the worst enemy to 100% trust in the Lord. Our own understanding of something is our worst enemy to 100% to trust in the Lord. Because he says, lean not to your own understanding. That doesn't mean to be dumb. That doesn't mean to, 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 to carry out illiteracy in, in your speech or in your actions. It doesn't mean that. It just simply says there's something higher than your intellect. There's something higher than your degree. There's something higher than your ability to think through things. What is that? Trusting in the Lord with all of your heart. And living and walking in godly contentment, we've got to get this down. We've got to get this down. I'm a firm believer that during this time, it's a great revealer of our faith. It's allowing us to exercise ourselves in what we say we believe, what we said we believe. We've always claimed that God is our source. Yeah, it's easy to say that when everything is great. But claim it now and act like Isaac did. While everybody else is pulling back, he's pushing forward. He sold in the land of famine. He sold in the land of drought. He sold when the economy was down because he knew the economy up or down is not my source. And seed time, harvest time, Genesis 8, it will never cease. And just because conditions are not favorable in this world doesn't mean it reroutes my actions as a believer concerning my finances, period, point blank, end of the sentence. You're going to defeat the devil in this thing today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Watch this. Verse 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. See, that's what we want. As we're trusting in the Lord with all of our heart and not leaning to our own understanding, he's directing our paths. He's letting us know, hey, they're going to ask you to work 12 hours today. Go ahead and do it now. Hey, they're going to ask you to hop outside of your job description. Go ahead and do it now. Hey, 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 they're going to ask you to do two or three things you're not normally doing. Go ahead and do it now. What is that? You're trusting in the Lord with all your heart. You're not leaning to your own understanding. And guess what? Your, your boss is not directing you. God is directing you. He's directing your path. 
But if you dig in your heels and you go, that, that's not my job. Well, the next board meeting, it may just be your last job. Why? Because you trusted in your own understanding and you did not let God direct your past. Verse 7, he says, be not wise in your own eyes. Be not wise in your own eyes. What he's saying is there's a higher wisdom than yours. There's a higher wisdom, and it's godly wisdom. It's living in godly contentment. He said, don't be wise in your own eyes. What do you mean be wise? Don't be, don't be conceited. Don't, be, uh, don't carry yourself with a self-sufficient pride about yourself. He said, don't be wise in your own eyes. He said, learn to trust me with everything you got. And I promise you, one of the most beautiful feelings you can get right now is when you're doing contrary. You're... you're, 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 you're you're, 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 you're telling your flesh, no, I'm, I'm still going to sow. I'm still going to give. I'm still going to bless. When Minister Nicky said that thing, I almost said, just go ahead and preach. I, you just, I'll just sit down, go ahead and preach. I just want to hear you preach. When she said, hey, they furloughed me, they cut me, but my heart was still to give this. That's when God spoke and said, brother, when you see, when you see what happened in this lady's life right here, the exports is going to happen, know this, I will be the sole source of it. And it didn't come out of the blue, didn't come out of the sky. It came out of somebody whose heart cries, nothing else matters but God. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and merit to thy bones. Under the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of your increase. Why? So that your barns shall be filled with plenty and presses burst out with new wine. Listen to me. Carry yourself in this godly contentment like you're already wealthy. Carry yourself like money's no big thing to you. Carry yourself like your barns will always be filled. Carry yourself like, listen, I sow and I reap. I don't sow and get nervous. I don't sow and get scared. I don't sow and count it. I sow and I reap. That's what I do. I plant and I harvest. That's what I do. Oh, you plant and you harvest? That's exactly what I do. I plant and I harvest. I sow and I reap. I live in godly contentment. God is my source. This is who I am, and that is what I do. You carry yourself like money's no big thing to you. You carry yourself like you're out of debt, all your needs are met, and plenty more to put in store. You carry yourself like you're a money magnet, a distribution center. Carry yourself in this godly contentment like you are a Genesis 8.22 billboard for God that seed time and harvest time will never cease, and it won't cease in this person, and it won't cease in these contents, and it won't cease in this household, and it won't cease in this business. Why? I sow and I reap as I live in this godly contentment. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Listen to this. When our inner man lines up with God's word, when our inner man lines up with, God word, with God's word, we gain financial peace. When our inner man lines up with God's word, we will gain financial peace. When our inner man lines up with God's word, we will live in perfect godly contentment. And that inner man has to line up. It's hard for anything to happen out here if you're not content in here. It's hard for any godly actions to be seen out here if you're not content with godly actions in here. Listen, when our inner man lines up with God's word, we gain financial peace and we live in godly contentment. Say this with me. God is my source. God is my source. Your family calls up and says, hey, I noticed such, such, such is happening. God is my source. God is my source. Hey, brother, what's going on with the business? God is my source. God is my source. You're not worried about God is my source. God is my source. Well, are your kids going to? God is my source. Well, well if, 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 if you got to go back to work, you don't have babysitters in, in life. God is my source. God is my source. I'm living in perfect peace, perfect financial peace. I'm living in godly contentment. God is my source. Well, I'm just saying, who's going to watch your? God is my source. God's going to take care of me. Why? Because I've mastered living in this godly contentment. God is your source. Your clients are just one of many means for the business owner. Your clients is just one of many means for the business owner. One of many means 
of the ways that God gets income to you. You selling your hours is, is just one of many means of the ways God gets income to you. Your boss favoring you, giving you a raise, is just one of many means that God uses to get income to you. Well, my boss, my clients, no, 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 they're great, but they're just means that God is moving on their heart. He's a source to do that to you, and you got to understand that. Oh, my clients are so nice. Oh, they just tip me all the time. No, God provokes their heart to tip you all the time. They're just a resource, a means that God is, 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 is poking their heart to show you goodness. God is provoking their heart to show you goodness. Never make man your source, but they are means that God uses to bless you. Maybe you look to your employer as your source as you're trying to live in this godly contentment. That's dangerous. You can't look to your employer as your source. It's just a resource. You may look to your spouse as your source. You don't say, well, my, my wife is the only one working. My husband is the only one working. Guess what? Your husband or your wife is not your source. God is your source. God is your source. Shake that husband's career. Shake that husband's uh, business. Shake that husband's uh, 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 self-employed business. Guess what? And you're going to be shaken. That is not your source. God is your source. God is your source. And as you master living in this perfect uh, 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 godly contentment, you've got you to know and you've got to confess and you've got to believe and you've got to live like God is your source. The government is not your source. The government is not your source. God is your source. The government is just another means in, in which God gets stuff to you. The government is not your source. Your, your parents are not your source. Your grandparents are not your source. Your aunt, your uncle is not your source. God is your source. Why is it so important? When we do this and make them our source, we give them too much power. We give them too much power. You know, man, I, you, know, I, you know, I was paying for my house when my clients would tip me X amount of dollars every month. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and up this thing and I'm going to add a room because my clients always tip me an extra 700 bucks a, a, a month. Well, I tell you what, listen to me. You've given them too much power if you're basing your lifestyle on that. It's too much power. You got to live in perfect godly contentment. You got to know that God is your source. Don't give them that much power. My company will never, will never go on that you're giving them too much power. My industry will never, you're giving them too much power. In order to live in this perfect godly contentment, you've got to know I can't give resources, means that God uses to bless me. I can't give them that kind of power. I can't do it. My sustenance is in God. Hallelujah. We need to recognize and be fully convinced that only God is our source as we live in this perfect uh, godly contentment. Recognize and be fully convinced that God is our source. When we recognize that God is in charge, we are able to be more bold and we won't put undue pressure on the people or the entities in our lives. See, right now, some people are going to their, their employer going, hey, I need X, Y, and Z or else I'm going to go under. Hey, 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 God is your source and God is their source. They're doing all they can do to stay afloat. But see, when you, go, when you go putting undue pressure on people, it's because you haven't settled the fact that God is your source and God's going to take care of you. And if you just rewind back to when you came home from your job and began to work from home and your kids began to, home, your kids began to do schooling from home, if you just rewind back to day one and ask yourself this question, have I missed a meal? Have I had to walk outside naked? Because I ain't got no clothes. Have, have, have I missed a meal? Have I had to walk outside naked because I don't have no clothes? No, 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 I haven't. Well, guess what? God is taking care of you. God is taking care of you. God has been good to you. God has taken care of you at the baseline level. And guess what? He only promised daily bread. He's taking care of us. He's taking care of you. He's taking care of your family. Listen, that's one reason to shout right there. That's one reason to know I'm living in godly contentment. I got daily bread. I got clothes on my back. I got breath in my lungs. And you know what? I am good to go in God. When we truly get this revelation of that God is our source and living in this perfect godly contentment, when we truly get this revelation, guess what? It's freeing. It's freeing 
Because we are now able to be bold to do what God is telling us to do in any situation, in any circumstance. I heard a guy on TV, he said, man, he said, he said, he said, he said man, I'm running this church, powerful man of God. He said, I'm running this church, so on and so forth, and I'm, I'm getting through this thing, and I'm preaching to a camera, da 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 And while I'm preaching through a camera, the Holy Spirit says, as soon as you finish this thing, I need you to send a seed over here to this ministry. He was like, well, my God, I'm, 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 I'm doing everything I can to stay afloat over here. But you know what? He said, I did it. He said, it's so free to know that God is my source. He said, if I'd have held that thing and just kind of look, start to look inward, I would have been telling myself that God is not my source. I can't obey God when he tells me to do that. I can't do that. Why? It affects my security. It affects, it affects my peace when I release towards another man, towards another entity during these times. I can't do that. But guess what? The people who know that God is their source, the people who are trying to live in a perfect, perfect godly contentment, you know what they're, they're doing right now? They have their necks outstretched to bless. They have their necks outstretched to bless. And you know, when they come out of this thing, they're going to tell God, listen, I'm your distribution center. I'm the one. You bring the million flow to me. You bring the overflow to me. You bring the abundance to me. Why? Because you've seen me in a time of famine. You've seen my heart in a time of famine. You've seen my heart towards others in a time of famine. You've seen it. So, Lord, I declare I'm your distribution center. I'm, I, 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 I am the walking billboard for your goodness. Bring me the resources. I know what to do with them. I want to be others rich when it's going good. And when it's not going good, I'm going to bless. Why? Because you are my source. God is the great replenisher of your sources. Not your job. Not the market. God is the great replenisher. Listen, it's freeing because we are now bold to do what God calls us to do and say it without fear. Listen, God is my source. 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 Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Hallelujah. Let's go to Philippians 4. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Paul sitting in prison, and he's, he, he's getting ready to tell us something here. And at the time he was sitting there, he... he, 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 he he, 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 he learns a valuable thing as he's talking to this church, as he's talking to Philip. And he learns something, and he lets us in on it. Amen? Philippians 4. Watch this now. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> God is good. Philippians 4. <clears throat> so he's coming out of, he's coming out of you know, be careful for nothing, and everything, give prayer and supplication, and the peace of God that passes all understanding to be in your heart, so on and so forth. But, but, but look, at, look at verse 8. He says, Finally, finally, and now you need to pay attention. Finally, brethren, and get this ready for me in the uh, Amplified and Message Meter. Finally, pay real attention when you see stuff like that. Close attention. Finally, he's like, I said all of this, but finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Here's this contentment now. Here's how you master it. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. Next verse. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, of, of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, watch this. If you're going to live in perfect peace, uh, perfect godly contentment, think on these things from the inside out. Next verse. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, Paul says, I want you to do them. And the peace of God, but the peace of God shall be with you. Next verse. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly now that I have, now that, that at last your care of me. Okay, now, now, now here we go. Here's a man who's anchored in godly contentment. And he's letting them know, I, 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 he's letting them know I didn't ask for anything. I didn't hint around and say that I need anything. Or well, why couldn't you hint around, uh, Paul? Why didn't you hint around, Paul? Paul says, because I am in perfect godly contentment. He said, I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Now, now at last, your care of me flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want. He, said, he says, I'm not hinting around for nothing. I'm not telling you I'm about to, about to cave in over here. I'm not trying to tell you that I don't have no money. The worst thing you can do right now in this time of pandemic is lie to get help. Tell lies to get people to help you. That's evil. That's witchcraft. 
Paul says, I didn't do that. Not that I speak of respect of one. Watch this now. Glory to God. Here's why I said earlier, leaning, uh, uh, trusting in God with all your heart is not easy. Paul tells you right here. Paul says, I had to learn. <laughs> For I have learned in whatsoever state I am. Good, bad, up, down, furloughed, laid off, virus, healed. Whatsoever state I'm in, I've learned something. To be content. To be content. Repeat that after me. I am content. To be content. Next verse. I know both how to be abased. <laughs> and I know how to abound. Paul says in any atmosphere, whether it's up or down, I've learned something. I've learned how to be content in God. And I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. In this pandemic, in this time, in my kids being at home with me, in my husband working from home with me, in my kids uh, 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 not walking to, to graduate, in my kids coming home, in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Next verse. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Here's the key. Pull up the Amplified for me. Here's the key. Here's the key to walking, to live and walk in perfect godly contentment. You've got to know whether it's up or down, God is my source. And I get, I get so excited about this because if Paul says, I took this time when I was bound, when I was in unfavorable circumstances, I took this time to learn something. <laughs> Glory to God. I took this time of uncertainty not to worry, but to learn something about God and myself. Man, they pull my paycheck back. It's not time to worry. It's time to learn. Man, I had five clients drop me uh, 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 this month. It's not time to worry. It's time to learn about yourself and learn about God. Whether you're up or you're down, it's time to learn. Oh, my, the, the kids, I, I don't the kids, the kids not going back to school. How am I going to get a babysitter? How, uh, how, what is going to happen? Because my job calls me back. I got to go back to my job. What's going to happen? You, you're taking the time to learn something like Paul did about yourself and about God. That's so exciting. That's so freeing. That's so powerful to me because now it replaces worry and you begin to learn like Paul did. I don't care what state I'm in. I don't care if the economy is up, the Dow is up, the Dow is down. Uh, they lay off, this lay off, no mask, got mask, abundant of mask. It doesn't matter. Listen, I'm learning something about myself and about God. Let's look at the Amplified. Finally, believers, <laughs> I love it. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever, uh, and a word of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever brings peace, Whatever brings peace. See, some people you can't talk to on the phone. Some people you can't text. Some people you can't even FaceTime with. Some people you can't even Zoom with. Why? Because they don't bring peace to your life. Whatever brings peace. The news may not bring peace to your life. Turn it off. Facebook may not bring peace to your life. Turn it off. Get off of it. Why? It's, what are you doing? If, if, if I'm going to bring peace, if I'm going to walk in this peace, if I'm going to have godly contentment, I need the proper contents going through my thoughts. I need the proper contents going through my mind. Why? Because I'm going to live in this godly contentment. Brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, report or repute, if there is any excellence, next verse, oh glory to God, if there's anything worthy of praise, <laughs> daily bread is worthy of praise. Putting a shirt on your back is worthy of praise. You don't believe me, just start practicing it. When you put your clothes on, when you take that first bite of that food that day, just give God some praise. Just say, Father, I thank you for this bread. Lord, I thank you for these cereal. I don't take it for light. I don't take it for granted, God. God, I just thank you for this shirt. Lord, I thank you for these shoes I just placed on my feet. You begin to give God praise continually. He said, think continually on these things. Watch this. Center your mind. To walk in godly, perfect godly contentment, we've got to center our mind on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. 
Put them in your heart. The things which you have learned during this time and received and heard and seen. And me, Paul says, practice these things. Watch this. Not every now and then in your daily life. See, some of you right now have got food in front of you. That's why I'm real big on when food is placed in front of you. I want to see you pray over it. I want to see you give God some thanks. I want to see you at least say, Lord, I thank you for this food and bow your head. I'll never forget, I was with my spiritual father uh, here in the city, and we was out eating at, 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 at Subway's there, and, 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 and it was some leaders. It was some leaders about 40 feet away from us at a table, and, and I've never seen him do this, and he wasn't, you know, pastor spying on nobody, but, he, but, but, but he, he's very big on seeing you pray over your food. He's, let's see, let, 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 let's see. He's not, I got him leading, I got him leading the department. Let's see if they... Let's see if they're going to at least pray over their daily bread there. I said, okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, let's see. The food is down. Food is down. Uh, let's see. Sprinkling salt. Uh-oh. He's opening the ketchup. Oh, boy. He's about. Oh, oh he, he, he ate it. Now, he, he's not going to hell for that. He didn't get demoted in the department for that. He didn't. But the bottom line was he didn't just do the basic things. Thank God for his daily bread. And every spiritual leader, church leader, every believer, my God, thank God during your daily life for things, the little small things, what am I doing? I'm practicing living in perfect godly contentment. So practice these things daily. Next verse. And the God which is the source of peace and well-being will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that now at last you have renewed your concern for me, Paul says. Indeed, you were concerned about me before, but you had no opportunity to show it. Not that I speak from any personal need, for I have learned, there it is again, this is the time to learn about you and God. See, I'm learning about me and God in my finances. I'm learning about me and God in my prayer life. I'm learning about me and God in my family. I'm learning about me and God in uncertain times. I'm taking the time to learn about myself and ask myself questions. Why why won't you do that? Why would you think that? Why why did you give 100 when God told you 150? Why why would you do that, Derek? What's going on? Well, I just figured. No, don't just figure. You need to learn why are you doing that. Why aren't you doing X, Y, and Z? You need to learn about yourself. He says, for I've learned to be content, watch this, and self-sufficient, not in myself, through Christ. Satisfied to the point where I am, watch this, satisfied to the point, this is what I'm adding my faith with you on, satisfied to the point where you are not disturbed and you are not uneasy regardless of your circumstances. Glory to God. I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times. And I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity, Paul says. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing life, whether well-fed or going hungry, whether having abundance or being in need. I can do all things. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens me and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. And I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Say that with me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. That I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. This is going to cause you to live in perfect godly contentment. You want to keep these, this, scripture on your, uh, this word on your lips. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Watch this. I'm ready for anything. And equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength. Inner strength. Remember the contents. Infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Glory to God. Let me see it in the Nevertheless, no, 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 glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, listen to this thought, glory to God, 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody tell me to be quiet back there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you. L listen to this thought. Glory to God. God promises to supply our needs, according to Paul. God promises to supply our needs, not our greed. God promises to supply our needs and not our greed. See, a lot of stress and worry and discontentment is coming from believers who are thinking God should, should, be, God should be supplying our wants during this time, our needs during this time. But guess what? Some people had to cut back from the platinum cable and go down to basic. That's a need. Platinum and 4,500 channels is, is, is not a need. God promises to supply our needs and not I agree. That's thought number one. Thought number two. The secret for contentment in every situation is to focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord how? As sovereign. Focus on the Lord how? As your Savior. Focus on the Lord how? As the sufficient one, Paul tells us. The secret for contentment, this godly contentment we're talking about, in every situation, in every circumstance, is to focus on the Lord as sovereign. Focus on the Lord as Savior. Focus on the Lord as the sufficient one. That is the secret to living and walking in godly contentment. Focus on your Lord as sovereign, as your Savior. You got you to gotta focus on those three things. And when you focus on those three things, there's no other room for another resource or another master to try to creep in and govern your countenance as a believer. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Here's another thought based on what Paul is saying. Godly contentment. Remember, Paul said, listen, not that I have want now. Not that I told you guys to do this. Not that I told you guys to sow in my life. Not, and guess what? Paul could even build his tents at this time. And he still wasn't hitting around. He couldn't even do his business at this time. And he still didn't hit him. He said, not that I speak of one now. I know my tent business is shut down, but I'm, 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 I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Listen, listen. Godly, people who live in godly contentment does not pitch hints for assistance. People that live in godly contentment, it doesn't pitch hints for, for, for assistant, assistance. Listen, it, it is steeped, or they are steeped in this thought right here. God will provide. God will provide. Paul says, I didn't hear around with you guys. I, I, I didn't hear around that I needed this. You knew my tent business was shut down. He said, I was learning something during this time. I wasn't playing games. I wasn't pulling people in, acting like I'm about to fall apart, acting like I don't have a dime to my name. I wasn't doing that. I was learning something about me and God. And he says, you know what? You know what? How can Paul even say that? Because Paul was steeped in this thought right here. God will provide. God will provide. God will provide. God will provide. Listen to this. <clears throat> Unforeseen circumstances. This is, what, this is what Philippians 4 and Paul is teaching us. Unforeseen circumstances should train us in godliness. Should train us in godliness. And it should never train us in worldliness. It should never train us in worldliness. It's to train us in godliness. You know, unforeseen circumstances, we're in it now. But don't let it train you in a worldly way. Don't let it train you to act worldly. Don't let it train you to start talking worldly. It's to train us to be more godly. To be more godly. That's why it's so important when the word of God is coming forth on any subject. You may not be in that season. You may not be in that storm. But I tell you what. You have to hear every word that God has to say to you. Why? It could be three years from now. There were some people, three to five years from now, sat down in finance conventions, sat down in uh, uh, financial teachings, sat down in what it means to be faithful, sat down in, 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 in how to survive, uh, how to live daily with God, how, how, how to receive abundance from God. They sat down in that thing, and because everything was going so well for them, they didn't hear the word, and they didn't get no faith on it because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So now here we are in unforeseen circumstance. If they did not take the time to learn how to live in unforeseen circumstances, what's happening now? They're acting like the world. They're acting like the world. They're acting like the world. 
So everything may be perfect for you right now. And you may, you, may, you may be approaching this with an exemption mindset. Never approach the word of God like that. Approach the word of God knowing this, that God loves you so much that he's looking around the corner and he's preparing you for unforeseen circumstances. He loves you just that much. He loved us just that much during the, 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 the beginning of the year, January 1. He loved us so much that he told us to teach on divine assistance. He loved you so much that he told us to teach on divine assistance. He loved you so much that he told us to teach on the vine and the branch. He loves you so much he told us to teach about what it means to be connected to the vine and the branch. What was he doing? He looks around the corner and he says, you're going to need this. You're going to need this. He says, I love you just that much. You're going to need this. You're going to need this. Why? To live in perfect contentment when these unforeseen circumstances come to play. Listen, I hadn't looked at one goal I had in January. <laughs> I had them wrote down. Here's what I want to achieve. Da, da, da. God said, put that away and learn something. But he said, put all that away and learn something. Find your purpose in me. Well, I got to find my true passion. No, find your purpose in me. Learn something. Learn to be content when things are going well and when things are just chaotic. Learn something now, Derek. Learn something about your faith. Learn something about how you respond to the word of God. Learn something if you're a base or a bound. What, are you, what is your countenance? What is your effect? Learn to be tent, content. Learn to live and walk in this godly contentment. And if you don't take an interest in yourself, my God, who else is going to take an interest in you? you got to care enough about you and your family and your future to say, you know what? It's time to learn something about myself and about this thing called the word of God. Why? Because God is loving me so much that I know he's going to take care of me, but things are unforeseen. Circumstances, situations are changing so fast, I can't keep up with them. But what I can do, I can learn to be a base. Whether I'm a base or a man, I, I, I can learn that. I can learn to be content. Content knowing what? That God is my source and he will provide. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory to God. Man, I would take off running, but I, I, can't, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Trust me, I want to. <laughs> Contentment is a state of happiness and satisfaction. Paul was, although he was in prison, he was in, he was in a state of happiness and satisfaction. His tent business, not going, shut down. He was in a state of happiness. In a state of satisfaction. That's what content means. <clears throat> Contentment is finding joy in what we already have in our lives. Finding joy in what we already have in our lives. You know, as when we finished up over there at the Johnson's house, we had a chance to just to sit around, you know, there at the bar, uh, you know, not the, you know, well, with the counter there, my God, I, some, you know, religious folks would take that and take off running with it. My God, they're drinking too. But we had a chance to sit around, and we're just talking about, talking about our lives, our family, our kids, our marriage, and um, finding joy <laughs> in what we already have. And we began to talk about, you know, you, you know I could be in the house uh, working there, and, um, you know, I may not look like I'm working, and, and, and Pastor Z may not think that I'm working, and she may say something like, uh, when are you going to get started on your day? And I'm like, um, uh, I'm already started. I started at 5 a.m. And I, it kind of rubs me the wrong way when you uh, pitch the thought that I'm not working. And boy, we can, we can, get, we can get, you know, we, we, I, I shoot back and she'll shoot back and shoot back and shoot back. And, 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 and what it is, Derek, hey, calm down, buddy. Just find joy in what you already have. Your beautiful wife is standing here. You guys are working together. 10, 12 hours a day. You can sit down outside on the patio and eat with one another. All day long, 24-7, you already have her. Find joy in that. And I've learned to say things like, sure, sweetheart. Of course. <laughs> of course we can. Sure, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. You know, that's, that's a great thought. Let's go ahead and talk about that. What, 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 what am I doing? I, I mean, I'm, I'm finding joy in what I already have. I'm living in perfect, godly contentment because if I if I don't practice this I begin to question why are you asking me that why are you even saying that and boy if, you, if I walk in a room and I'm ready to talk to her or ask her a question and she points me out of that room because she's on a zoom call and she says get out of here get out. I walk out little feelings hurt 
this, that, and the other. She finished the call. She comes in there. And God said, listen, rejoicing with what you already have. She comes in there. Okay, honey, what do you need? Nothing. I'm good. You sure? Yeah, I thought you wanted something. I'm, 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 I'm good. And I'm acting like a little, just a little, little spiritual punk. A little, 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 little softy, little feelings hurt, pouting and going on because I hadn't figured out, buddy, rejoice in the fact that you and your wife are in this house together, working together, and stop being offended every time she asks you what are you doing, what time you're going to finish this, what time you're going to finish that. I'm telling you, the offense meter for believers, for husbands and wives during this time is at an all-time high. And you know exactly what I'm talking about because now God has forced you to to work together, cooperate together, cook together, do schedules together, teach the kids together, all this kind of stuff, and you got to learn how to rejoice in the fact that you already have him or her, and you just need to maximize the gloriness of your life and their life within those four walls. If you don't do that, you're going to be at each other's throats uh, 24-7. 24-7. Finding joy in what we already have in our lives. Feeling or showing satisfaction. This is, this is the contentment I'm talking about. Feeling or showing satisfaction with our possessions. What are you doing on a car lot? Get off of it. You already got three cars. Oh, well, prices are down, interest rates are down. Get off of it. Find joy in what God has already blessed you with. Be content with that. Be content with your status. Be content with your situation. It's being happy without trying to find fulfillment in acquiring more stuff. Now, we was out yesterday, me and my wife, we're looking for, for looking, looking for flowers, looking for trees, looking for stuff. It's hot. You know, it's, it's, it's just so hot. And, man, it's just people are out. And, and, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you that Lowe's and Home Depot were knee deep in a bunch of bodies. Couldn't even find a parking space. Couldn't even park. Had to park on a curve. People are out and about. And I'm saying to myself, Man, this social distancing, I, I don't even know what it's turning to now. But here was the bottom line. People were out buying flowers, you know, upgrading their yards, working together, husband and wives talking, giggling and gaggling, so on and so forth. People were out and about. And you know what they're doing? They're finding joy in the house that God has already blessed them with. They're not trying to find a house 20% below market and, and, get, and, and come up. They're, they're, they're learning to be a base. They're learning to be a base. They're learning to abound in what, what they already have. Appreciate what God has already blessed you with. Now, I'm getting ready to say something, and the husbands, you can give me an offering uh, 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 right there on the website when I say this. Wives, get out there and help your husband in the yard. You don't melt when the sun hits you. You don't melt. You've worked in the sun before. Some of you ran track. Some of you, you, you did all that kind of stuff. Get out there and help that man. Get out there and build those memories. You may not have this time again for the next five years. Get out there and take that break with that man and plant those flowers and cut that grass and pull up those weeds and, and, and place your planter and walk to the street like me and my wife did last night. Why We are perfectly content with what God has blessed us with. We walk to the street. She's like, I want like six little bushes uh, right here. And I, I, I said, well, my God, how much is that? She said, they're only three bucks a pop. I said, okay then. I said, is that a weed or a flower? She said, I think it's a weed, but it's a beautiful one. And, and we ain't got to maintain it. I said, well, okay, we'll go ahead and put them down. And, 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 I'm, and we're just we're just stepping back off what God has already blessed us with. Saying we can do this, we can do that. Okay, how much that's going to cost? Okay, about 30 bucks. Okay, yeah, we, we, we can do that. And, and, and I found myself, I found myself as she was requesting of me, I found myself trying to make it more difficult than it really was to try to get out of it. And God said, stop. Rejoice in this time right now. I said, yeah, we, 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 we'll go ahead and put them down uh, Sunday when we get out of church. We'll, we'll go ahead and do it. She said, great, awesome, thank you. Oh, that's going to be nice. Da, 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 da. And I was walking back to the house like, God told me be more careful. But what are we doing? We're practicing rejoicing in what God has already blessed us with. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's keep going here uh, because we've got to wrap this thing up. First Timothy, real quick. First Timothy. First Timothy 6. First Timothy 6. Glory to God. Woo! Somebody say hallelujah. First Timothy 6. Look at this now. Now, now, the thing you got to know about what we're about to read here is, is there's a tremendous lesson about contentment in this. First Timothy 6, 
Um, let's see, verse 5. Chapter 6, verse 5. <clears throat> Paul is, Paul is, he's all, he was always teaching his son, Timothy. He was always teaching his spiritual son, Timothy. But he comes out of, just, just, just kind of lands things out to him. He says, listen, uh, uh, let's see, girl, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Verse 1, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let as many servants, 1 Timothy 6, verse 1, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemy. Verse 2, and they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather to do them service, because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things, he told them, teach and exhort. Teach and exhort, verse 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which he is according to to godliness, godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doing about questions, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising, perverse disputes of men, and corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness." That gain is godliness. You see what he lumped that in with, right? That gain is godliness from which withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Why? Because we brought nothing into this world. Here's how we got to be thinking during this time. We brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we won't take nothing out of it. Verse 8, and having food and raiment, let us therewith, watch this, be content. But they that will be rich falls into temptations and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. Listen to me. Listen to me. Glory to God. Listen to this. Give yourself time to learn the provisional nature of God. Is that it? Give yourself time. I'm sorry. Give yourself time to learn the provisional nature of God. That's what Paul is teaching us. Give yourself time to learn the provisional nature of God. He says, he says, gain only is not godliness. As a matter of fact, it's evil. He says, godliness with contentment is great gain. During this time, give yourself time to learn the provisional nature of God. That's what Paul did. He said, I have learned. And when you give yourself time to learn the provisional nature of God, let me tell you something about your money. It slows down. Why? Because every decision now, you're giving yourself time to learn the provisional nature of God, that God is going to take care of us, honey. Sow the seed. Buy the groceries. Pay the JA for somebody. I am shocked at how many friends I have that are from the street, are from the street that are asking, how do I get money to your church to give to single moms? How? Well, you do this, 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 and this. And, and, don't, and, and, and all they know is God on Mother's Day and Easter. But it's something about them understanding the provisional nature of their God. And they're asking, how do I offset the lack of others? But then there are those who have, haven't even posed a question. Why? Because they're not even trying to learn the provisional nature of God. They think they are sustaining themselves. But these guys over here who are trying to get money to the church to help the single mom, to help the grandma, who, who, who's not a minister, who's not a deacon, who's not an elder, who has been born again in 25 years, but it's just something in their heart that says, you know what? I know that God's going to take care of us, but I want to be a blessing to these people during this time. Give yourself time to learn the provisional nature of God. <clears throat> the goal, <clears throat> according to 
according to uh, 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 First Timothy, the goal during times of financial uncertainty is not to learn the market to make money or make more money. Money, I'm sorry. Not to learn the market or make more money is to learn contentment. <laughs> Let that sink in a little bit. It's not to spend six hours to see what real estate you can buy on the down low and not one minute learning contentment, learning godly contentment. You learn godly contentment first and let the Lord direct your path to the real estate deal. But if you're spending all your time on this thought right here, while everything is down, here's what I'm going to do. When everything goes back up, I'm going to be blessed. You know what? You're not learning contentment. You're learning gain and gain only. And he says, no, godliness, learning godliness and how God is responding, his provisional nature during this time, and, and contentment, that's going to be great gain. That's going to be great gain. Hallelujah. Woo, man alive. Listen to this. <clears throat> it's going to be our last thought. Contentment. teaches us, contentment teaches us how to identify what we need without loving it. This is something we strive on teaching our church. We say, hey, you need money, but you don't love it now. You're going to need money to do stuff, but we also got to teach you not to love it. <laughs> we got to teach you, you need it. But we've got to teach you not to love it. And that is, the, that, that is the great living in perfect godly contentment equation right there. Hey, people are like, hey, I need money. I know, but we're teaching you how to, how, how to need it and lo not love it simultaneously. That's what contentment teaches us. It teaches me that, hey, I need money for my JEA, but I don't love it. I need money, you know, for my mortgage. I don't love the money. I need money, you know, to put food on the table, but I don't love the money. Why? I understand that godliness, God's provisional nature, I'm learning about him. He's going to take care of me. And contentment is going to be great gain. Godliness and contentment is great gain. Living in perfect godliness and contentment is your goal. Learning the nature of you and the nature of God. Learning you as a believer during this time, it should be a fascinating time for you to look yourself in the mirror and go, why aren't you doing X, Y, and Z? Why would you even think like that? Why haven't you done what God told you to do? God told you to do X, Y, and Z. You still hadn't done it. Why are you thinking that you're, 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 you're exempt from everything? Why are you even trusting in your riches like that? Well, why are you even doing that? What, what are you doing? You're learning like Paul did. Whether it's up or down, learn. Whether the kids are home or not, learn. Whether the job is, 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 is furloughing or laying off, learn. Learn. Learn the provisional nature of your God. Why? He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He's going to take care of you. Every turn of your life, he's going to take care of you. He's taking care of you. He's providing daily bread. He's providing raiment. He's providing food. He's providing clothing. He's providing computers for your kids. He's providing uh, uh, printers for your kids. He's providing everything your kids need to make it through this, 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 this semester, through this term. God's provisional nature is flexing, flexing its muscles. But if you're steeped in self-sufficiency, you can't see it. Why? You're not paying attention to the needs being met. You're paying attention to yourself and your selfishness trying to gain something during this time. And you're not learning nothing about the provisional nature of God. And I speak over you in the name of Jesus. I speak debt freedom over you during this time. I speak gainful employment over you during this time. I speak all of your needs met. During this, during this time, let me tell you something about me and my wife. We are anointed to advance. We walk in so much financial prosperity, so much financial peace. And it's not prideful. It's not talking crazy. It's not talking like, you know, we're in love with money. We're just anointed in that area. We're anointed to advance. And I'm telling you, you got to perfect this godly contentment. You got to live in it. You got to walk in it. And at some point, you got to tell what's trying to tell you you're going to be okay. You got to look at it and go. Nope. 
Give me 300 of that money. Give me 400 of that. Give me 4,000 of that. Give me 5,000 of that. What are you doing? Listen, I'm learning the provisional nature of God, and for some reason, my security is anchored in this thing. Oh, honey, I thought you was living by faith and, and, and not by spite. No, 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 honey. No, no, no. During this time, I hadn't lived by faith, not one iota. I've been living by this money we got put up over here. And today, I'm telling some of it that you're not my God. You're not my source. I'm not going to govern myself. If I'm trying to perfect godly contentment, I'm not going to govern myself fearful in the financial arena and call it prosperity. I'm I'm, I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. And, you know, what I'm talking about, I'm seeing exercised by people who I know are Believe in God daily for food. And I'm seeing those people ask me and ask me and my wife, what do you guys need? I said, how's that single mom? Why is that grandmama emailing that? We're, we're good to go. Hey, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's a bag of rice or whatever. I don't have much, but, you know, what, what do you guys need? You know, I, I can't do much. I can run an errand. You know, I, I'm 40 miles away from you, but I, I don't know. Maybe I'm stepping out of line. Maybe, may, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm overstepping my boundaries, but I, I just want to know. Uh, uh, it'll be me and my grandbaby. If, if, if I got to pick something up for you, I, I can pick it up and bring it to you. And I'm saying to myself, wait, 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 wait now. Well, wait a minute. She may not have the gas. She may not have the money. But her heart is reaching out to us <laughs> to make sure we're okay. Man, I got off that doggone email. I said to myself, and I said to, my, I said to all of our finances, I said, let me tell you something. You are not my God. And it's a stink, stinking thought for me to carry myself like you are my God. It's a disgusting thought. I'm talking to myself. It's a disgusting thought to have extra, to have more than enough, and my heart is not inclined to do good towards others, which it is, which we are. But I reminded myself that this thing is not my God. And those little single moms and those grandmothers and those single men and those grandfathers that's reaching out to give a widow's might has taught me something I'm learning about the provisional nature of God. People who are givers, people who have hearts to give, they give when it's up, they give when it's down. And here's what I know about those people. Come hell or high water, they are secure in God. And God is going to continue to take care of them because you know what they've settled? The job, retirement, Social Security, Medicare, ain't none of that stuff my source. God is my source. It's all I have. And for those who are not practicing that, let me tell you something about your future. One day, you're going to find yourself right there. And I declare in the name of Jesus over XL Church, we are others focused. We are sowers. We are givers. We are offsetters of lack. We are gainfully employed. We are blessed in our businesses. Clients are coming from the north, south, east, and west. We are sustained people in this brook. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise right there where you're at. Let's just go ahead and lift our hands right there where you're at. Just go ahead and stand up and lift your hands. Go ahead and give him some praise right there. Give him some thanks right there. And let him know that God, let, let the world know. Let your house know. Let your kids know. Turn to him and say, listen, God is our source. God is our source. God is our source. You said, man, I didn't participate in the offering. I didn't sow any seeds. Let me go ahead and sow a seed. Let me go ahead and make sure. Wife, turn to your husband and just make sure. Hey, sweetheart, make, are we honoring God? I want to make sure that. Why? Because we, we, we don't lean in our own. We don't trust our own understanding. We don't lean towards our own understanding. We acknowledge him in all of our ways. Let that devil know. And it's not that the church needs the money. It's not that the church wants the money. What I'm trying to do is I am teaching my church, our church, how to live in perfect godly contentment, knowing that God is going to take care of them. And it will be robbery, spiritual robbery, if I didn't tell you that God's got you taken care of. But it's time for you to start learning about his provisional nature and about you as a believer, about you as a giver. It's time for you to learn about you and look at the ugly part, look at the good part, and you tell that devil, listen, God is my source. Amen? 
If you want to be born again, click on that tab. We've got people standing aside that want to pray with you, and they can pray the prayer of salvation with you. Number two, if, if you want to receive a, a rededication, you can receive rededication. And rededication is very simple. It just simply says...